Happy birthday, Melania. I'll be honest with you. Today's character, or just... <laughs> did I just say today's character? I don't know. Today's agenda is actually pretty simple. We're gonna level up our healer, but before we do that, here's what I think what I'm gonna do. Alright, I still don't know if I'm gonna level up Melania. Can I help you? Maybe soon enough. But as far as I'm concerned, I want to level up Sweetheart, I want to level up Blani because she's a good star unit, I think, I hope, because Apple and Matilda, they're not really the best DPS. As for our healer, I think Sotheby will make a good choice. We have our artifact, or Psy Cube, or craft essence depending from which game you come from when the carrier casts a basic incantation debuff hp plus the carrier's attack for the ally with the lowest hp i think i like that so let's get to leveling up sotheby we're gonna most likely only insight to her for now insight three should come soon uh, the expenses should I reimburse them all? Rich lady moment. I really hope she grows a spine and realizes that the foundation is abusing her rights. Inheritance. Genius lady will be leveled up. Can we even read it? No. Well, we're gonna re resonate her soon enough. Actually, wait, we need to level her up. Yeah, now let's use Sharpedantes. I need it for the Roar Jukebox. So this isn't a waste of Sharpedantes, to be honest. Actually, that's cutting it kind of close. Inheritance Genius Lady. So it just increases the poison rounds and then increasing healing done. Alright, well, that's pretty good, I would say. The outside world is much bigger than I thought. I'll be honest with you, her outfit's cute, but I kind of loved her previous outfit more. I mean, her hair's pretty nice, but again, it's just like... I don't know. It looks cool, I love it, but like, the first one was also pretty special, I would say. I mean, we're gonna play like this, we're gonna see her in main story soon enough anyways, so... Let's just do a bit of resonance. Maybe up to level 4 or something. Bada bing, bada boom, and there's that. We're not gonna use that material. We're just gonna quick load. I don't know. Quick load, thank you very much. Give her some stats, and she's good to go. Now, the real character on our agenda today is none other than Eternity. It's always good to have you here. No matter if you found a bargain or... Suffered a lot. It's been a while since I've looked at her character sheet and done something with it. Well, now, haha, <laughs> the reason the episode was delayed was because I can now insight 3 her. Hell yeah, baby. Well, just a tiny piece of change in my long, calm life. Smash. Next question. So, enhanced blood of longevity. Damage dealt plus 5%, and damage heal plus 5%. At 5 stacks, it transforms into blood of immortality. Okay. We get a lot of stats I, now that I look at it. She's actually. We're gonna put a few levels. Never mind, we're out of Sharpedantes, aren't we? Well, <laughs> I guess that concludes our level up session for now. Let's go resume main story. And we can see what our uh, thing does now. Trial, challenge, record, a splendid debate between numbers. Let's think back. Let's see. Does inside three? Never mind. So one of these gives her sturdiness. I'm not sure which are. Ah, that one gives her. All right. It could be found. Boom boom. Check my All right. There's still two more enemies. We are taking this pretty decently, I would argue. So this is the card that gives. Okay, so we can use this for two stacks of sturdiness. 
I don't see a turn limit on the sturdiness. Alright. That's pretty good. And this is a mass buff grants. So if I use this, she's gonna use her offensive ultimate, I think. But I think we're gonna use the normal attacks. And we're gonna combo into that special attack. Yeah, that was her Eureka thing. A buff, a stack of sturdiness. Welcome to the world of numbers. Are you a rat of numbers? Eureka! And she quit. God damn. God damn. And maybe that's my cue to level up 37 before the end of this chapter. Yes, yes, the deserved victor. Thank you very much for the free tears. Or the clear drops, I should say. Middle of the axis. Neither based, no, neither biased nor neutral. Neither positive nor negative. Neither excessive nor deficient. I assume we're, assu I assume we're talking about the number zero. You know, because Timekeeper. There is an outbreak of muttering among the white robes. Even the solemn judge stands up. 37. You just said Vertin's number is zero. Do you know what it means? Very clearly. Would you be able to submit proof to a payron? No problem. Half of you in this hall have put in the pebbles. If 37's argument is found to be true, every argument Vertin has spoken in Sonetto's defense will be deemed valid. Sonetto will be exempt from the punishment. I will announce the result once 37's proof has been validated by a Peron. Thank you for your time. One after another, the Peron followers leave the hall. The Hall of Truth returns to tranquility. <sighs> Sonetto slowly sits on the floor in a lackluster manner. Sonetto, timekeeper, I'm so sorry. I tried my best, but still I couldn't understand the debate. I failed again. Her face becomes abnormally pink and her breathing becomes fast and shallow. What happened to her? Come here, little girl. We need to move her outside. And now you're gentle? What's the deal? My guy, you were arguing Light for her, her execution. Her and wipe her palm and feet with dew and peppermint oil. <sighs> that would be okay. Her physical signs are becoming more and more stable. Thank you. You're welcome. The distinguished number zero. The man shrugs his shoulders. I'm kidding. I'm 210. Well, instead of the number, I prefer people call me... The rhetorician. I've heard your preachment. Pretty demagogic. The man nods, looking amused. That's how logic works. With logic, I can prove that you'd cease to exist in the next moment, or that there are no other people in this world except me. Achilles can never outrun a tortoise, and a flying arrow is forever motionless. This debate is nothing but meaningless wordplay. That pacifist lets you off this time. Six. <laughs> A perfect number indeed, for he knows the benefit of reconciliation. Who wants to have blood on their hands and be devoured by the cycle of hatred? Yet it's a torture for any intelligent mind to hear such an immature debate. Can you feel the suffering of our leader now? I'm sorry. 210 gives her a triumphant smile. No smart. apology needed, Miss Outsider. I also feel sorry for your pain, given that 37 has revealed your number. What do you mean? 37. Our evil little genius. The most cunning star of Hermes. She's been having fun revealing others' as numbers for a long time. Our numbers are our essence. And it's also the most important proof we get once in our lifetime. But she enjoys taking that opportunity away from you. Just because her talent allows her to do so. She did that to her friend, too. She found out Sophia's number. But without casting an eye on that paper with her number on it, Sophia threw it into the sea. Sophia is Sophos. But you... I pity you. It doesn't seem like trouble to me. 
Alas, poor little Virgin. You still don't understand. You're now a part of us. The number of our souls suggests our fate. It might be changed through algorithms temporarily, swirling, shifting, or transforming alongside other changes occurring on the coordinate axis. But in the end, we can only be ourselves. One is thought. Two is opinion. Three is wisdom. Four is strength. Five, enthusiasm. Six, harmony. Seven, order. Eight, philanthropy. Nine is restraint. While ten is completion. So, see, he lost me at ten. I was going to say, so if your number is 37, yours is wisdom and order. But clearly not. I mean, we know six is harmony. But, like, if we looked at this guy, two, one, zero. Actually, we don't even see zero. So, two is opinion, ten is completion. So, his opinion is complete. You know what? Take that, Redditors. I think 210 would be the strongest Redditor out there. He would just comment an opinion, and no one can be. No one can argue with him because his opinion is complete, you know? Zero, however, is in the middle of the axis, the origin of the frame of reference. It's neither positive nor negative, neither prime nor composite. Things are ever changing, but you stay the same. Your loneliness also lasts forever. Yeah, well, we kind of know that. <sighs> this is your fate. Being exposed in full view of the crowd, yet you know nothing about it. 37 was acting on impulse. Yet she opened Pandora's box. She leisurely reveals your fate. That carefree behavior makes no difference to picking up a shell on a beach. How could I not pity you? The man waves his hand and walks away. The air is still. The only sound of waves comes from afar. Miss Verton. The leader stands in the dark. 37's proof has passed the review. Your friend will now be exempt from the punishment for violating the rules. However, she has to take some catch-up lessons on the scripture. Please, meet me at the hall tomorrow at noon. I would have words with you. All right. Let's just hope we don't get integrated into their culture, because that just sounds like a bad idea. I leveled up Eternity to have an easier battle and all that stuff, and then it turns out we're not gonna even use Eternity today. I'm a clown, aren't I? I should have recorded this yesterday. <laughs> You're telling me all that grinding was for this, huh? So that I don't even use her. Well, think long term, Forever Life. Chain of Peace. He declares that the old standoff must end. Never mind, this is a battle. I'm just a clown. It looked like it looked like one star. Come on, come on. Don't don't do that to me. I guess I'm half of a clown now. In this life there are three kinds of men. Just as there are three sorts of people who come to the Olympic Games, I can't read. The best of all, for, however, are those who come to look on. Uh, bro, I, I don't know. I can't read. Just Greek philosopher stuff. Before this negotiation begins, I wish to tell an allegory to the two of you. A group of people were imprisoned in a cave. Behind them, there was a fire. Before them, was a tall, solid wall. Their legs and necks were chained and fixed, so they were constrained to look nowhere but to gaze at the wall in front of them. When they dropped their eyes, they saw their own body. When they looked up, the flickering light of the fire fell over them, and they only saw the shadows of what was passing behind them. No one had lived one day outside the cave. The shadows cast on the wall all there was to be perceived as reality. They had no knowledge of the real world. One day, one of them escaped from the cave, walked into the light, 
and saw the true world with his own eyes for the first time. Everything he saw or felt in the cave was nothing more than a mere shadow of the object's true form. Our world is a poor one, Miss Verton. The phenomenal world is the cave in this allegory, where we are surrounded by shadows or some humble fractions of the truth. It is ugly, frivolous, filthy, perishable, subject to decay, and filled with hollow desires and meaningless struggles. Only the wise can walk out of that cave and see the world as it truly is. In that eternal, transcendent world, Everything is in its most perfect form. I pray that you, Miss Verton, the representative of St. Pavlov Foundation, and you, Miss Arcana, her counterpart of Manus Vindicte, would pay heed to my words. We just casually say, yup, Arcana's here. Everything you've been fighting each other for means no more than some fragments of phenomena to us. There's only one thing worth doing. That is, to seek higher wisdom, develop one's virtue, and achieve greatness in life. We have never set foot on the soil dampened by the storm, nor have we ever been involved in the disputes brought by the torrents of time. I beg you, do not take your conflict in the phenomenal world into the realm of truth. For certain. It was never my intention to sully the sanctuary of truth. Then, to prevent a situation like this from happening again, I would like to ask you two to carve your names on these two stone bangles and drip a drop of your blood on each of them. Once the bracelet is put on, no one will be able to remove it. From now on, as long as you're on this island, none of your people will draw blood from one another, or the bangle shall draw all the blood from you. The peace agreement is so decided. Arcana stretches out her hand and gently takes a bite. I appreciate that. I'll sign it. The leader gives a slight nod. He looks out from the table and simply strides away. Bangle feels real in their hands. It certainly possesses some sort of power to fulfill the bloody pledge. <laughs> the peace agreement. Senator is approaching. Yes, she is still here from the beginning to the end. Provoking. Dark clouds in isolation. She is reclaimer of her name. Born in flames. She has been blessed. Her family's crest is a demon of. Lady Verton. We don't want to get cancelled, do we? Hello, Arcana. I don't like you. Your design still looks bland, but I guess that is intentional by design. I wish the best to thy friend. She's doing well, thanks to you. <laughs> You're most welcome. Thou shalt quench, for times hath changed. I would not wish to shed even a drop of Arcanist's blood in vain. But Schneider should be the victim of a merciless bullet? <laughs> that in my pitiful child. Did you forget? That merciless bullet cameth from a gun never belonging to me. <gasps> What's Manus Vindicte's purpose to be here? Hearken the archaic wisdom, just as thou doest. The stone bangle is hot, almost scalding. <laughs> I am not surprised. I adore thy visage, Lady Verton, emotionless in the storm. <laughs> Alas. <laughs> Verton has locked in. No man shall bravest the storm and live, including thee. Her words sound as harsh as the winter gale. An emotion suddenly comes, it's raging like a bush fire, but soon gets tamed down. A wooden box in the Elitiao's base has my name on it. Was that your doing? Sadly, it wasn't. I hope thee findeth the answer satisfactory. The figure of Arcana disappears in the night, even though it's daytime. The stone bangle at the wrist becomes subtly heated. It's burning. 
Something is slithering in the woods nearby. Miss Arcana? Miss Arcana, please don't go. Save us and save us. Two weary figures run past Verton. They are chasing after their leader desperately as if they are running away from some horrific monsters. Following them, a petite figure rushes out from off the woods. I assume that is uh, Regulus. No! Come back! Come back! Never mind. She's doing that pharaoh pose. You ignorant foreigners! I just started introducing vectors and matrices and that's the most interesting part! <sighs> Burton. Great. You always show up at the right time and right place. Stop the mass people. Whatever it takes. Yep. And have all the blood get sucked off of Verton because we're now attacking Manus despite the fact we just signed a treaty to not attack Manus in this island. Well, I guess I wasn't a clown after all. We can actually use the fair lady herself. Uh, Insight 3. Eternity. And uh, let's bring out Sotheby, shall we? Where is she? There she let's is. Let's have a party then! Sure. Let's go in. Finally, some interesting work. So I'm not familiar with how Sotheby works. This is just debuffs, and then this is just a mass heal. I assume her ultimate is just a heal plus what cure are type of thing. Gently. I hear something. And yeah, that's What's basically what I know. A little bit hot. Oh yeah, another unit I'm interested in leveling up is Jessica, but she's low priority for me. Pickles is somewhat of a priority because he's reality, no no no, he's mental, whereas every other earth unit I have is reality. So, sure, let's spam D-Buffs. Gun. Agents have guns? It's called common sense. I the ingredients this time. Ah, he seems to be mixed up. This should be fine, right? Alright, let's test out. How does the healing look? What's that? What's this? Let's What's that? you know what? Sure, let's just get Max Moxie on. Neither What is that? Am I seeing healing or am I capping? We're getting shot. Hey, I'm the support staff. We're not healing much. We're just getting cure. Mass attack, reality damage. Ah, so you just spam cure and then you use the ultimate. Okay. I mean, sure. Take it easy. I kind of want to burst our enemies. <laughs> oh man, Sotheby. Oh boy. This is not looking good, Chief. I hear something. Try for free. Try for free. Okay, that guy doesn't die. A bit hot here. Neither does that guy. Have Someone's sense. dying, man. Someone is dying. It's other people. Well, maybe we need to look into another healer because that was uh <laughs> What was that? Gun. Sure, let's review screen this guy. I know the And this is an alien Oh yeah. I don't know. I, I really don't know what happened there. I really don't know. So, you spam debuffs and you spam cure as fast as you can to get your ultimate. And once you have your ultimate, you just proc all the healing at once. That is so weird, but sure. I mean, I was using her artifact. She's supposed to heal the ally with the lowest HP. And it seems like it only occurs once per turn. Or something like that. We might have to reread the effect How later. Gun. I hear something. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's uh, disarm and then just hit this guy with a eternity attack. Gun. It's cold. Disarm. Flying handbag for only three thousand aunties. And that should be game. Let's randomize our cards, get some AoE attacks in here. Gun, AoE, Eternity Attack, gently. and that's that. Agents have gun. It's called common sense. Hey. There we go. I will pray for you. Sorry. Ooh, a time skip. 
I wonder what happened in real life that compelled me to skip 12 hours in real life. God making the let's play. Oh, it's it's. <laughs> I'm so close to snapping, but hey, let's deal with this annoying narrator. The allegory, all dusty and dirty, like a little. They must have tried to fill your little brain with long preachment. Oh, that's our expert on absent-mindedness. Try to reach the corners of your mind, if you would. Yes, those people in gowns. White gowns, teacher, instructor, tutor, but they have nothing to complain about. You know what they say. They showed you a broad avenue in their teachings where you could enjoy a sense of security with all the solid ground, convenient automobiles, and warm sunshine. There is a distinction between good and bad here, and it's as clear as our innate sense of right and wrong. Like a floor of black and white, but in fact, there exists another path in the woods. No, oh, the woods drew us. Leading to the unknown darkness which cannot be seen with eyes or proved false. You may even experience indescribable chaos. So, which will you take? Oh, that's not an easy choice to make. This grandma must give you a round of applause. I would have even pinned a boutonniere to your... You've seen the living proof. Many were freaked out after they came back. Oh, my. That was a bit over the top. Here's some good news to cheer you up. Actually, there's still one more way you can take. I'm sure you know that, Mick. You shall take the soul of your love out of the underworld. Yet you shall not look back. The ones with the belief set off. They entered the dark woods barefooted, yet moved so smoothly as if they were walking on the avenue. They kept their mouths shut and eyes forward. They never turned back. They showed frugality, patience, and wisdom in the face of hunger, and so the beasts continued to lurk in the shadow. And the ones with the belief passed through the woods safely until... Think about what I just never look back in the woods, darling. If you don't want to be turned into a pillar of... Yes, we'd better stay awake. But then there comes the problem. How can anyone... How can you... Ignore your love for those thriving... Of course. You will cry the loudest cry. Dance the wildest... After all, there is no need to enter the woods if the souls... No. So you'd better let it slip your mind, darling. Just let it go and hurry forward. When you do so, the scenery will no longer mean anything to you. Nor will the fragrance of the flower. Is that what you want? I'll be honest with you, there is a whole lot of nothing in this dialogue. Even if it's low relevant, her voice is just... So annoying. Frankly speaking... I should probably not be recording while I'm in this mood, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Let's keep on. Let's keep going, shall we? So, if you look at this, there's this thing, which we don't have a geometric pendant. I assume we're gonna get that later on. Uh, similar to this, we have more like random scribbles to vent emotion. Than poetry, a mockery written in jest, a poem. I'll be honest with you, usually I would read this, but I'm looking at it and it makes no sense. So we're gonna move on. We can always look at that back later. I mean, I don't think it's <laughs> I don't think it's relevant enough to look back on. I'll be honest with you, again, I, I'm not in the mood. I just wanted to record this old lady talking and then move on. Uh, I apologize, but we're going to have to end it here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time where we're going to probably hop on stream, break our record, and be the second person to speedrun Epic... Second person or second try to speed run reverse 1999. If you can tell, if you can't tell, my brain is fried. Again, I'm sorry. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.